you or some stuff. Yeah, you get that spot off me, you're going to have to work on some stuff. No, I can't. But I go to church on Sunday. Don't mean nothing. Done messed up a good walk. <laughs> now look, at, some of y'all can't see me for the spot. <laughs> That's how we are before the Lord. I bring the sacrifice of praise unto the house. <laughs> and the Lord is like, but I see that sin. Yeah. Then we go right back out and we make it bigger. Put some more. I ain't going to put no more on it. <laughs> I bring the sacrifice of praise. And we just get, and I offer unto you. It's all over the sacrifice. You know. Don't we? Don't we? Come on, praise the Lord for that. <laughs> Say, yeah. And then we wonder, I wonder why he ain't being blessed. I wonder why. I wonder why. And the Lord said, I go to church. I go to church. But are you clean? Jesus says, you are clean through my word. Why do you think we struggle to read the Bible during the week? What's happening when we ain't reading the Bible? We're getting dirtied up. We're struggling. Somebody get up and say, let's read the Bible every day, first thing in the morning. We'd be like, oh, man, they getting kind of religious, ain't you? They, they a little exuberant about this thing. <laughs> but anybody got to tell you to do other hygienic stuff in the morning? See? And if we are not washing with the water of the word, Guess what? Dirt attract dirt. And this white suit ain't white no more. It's, it's dirty. It's off color. But we got a high priest that stands in heaven waiting on us to come to him and say, Lord, forgive me. Father, forgive me for my sin. Wash me and make me whiter than snow. Why? Because I want to keep doing that. Then I'm going to go back out, get in sin again, and come back in. Okay, but well, I'm back again for another sin. No, that ain't the game. That's the church game. <laughs> I did it again. I'm, I'm back. <laughs> I can't keep from doing it. Dang, man, now you've been a Christian five years, ten years. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> Now, <laughs> I did it again. I'm going to keep on doing it. I just can't. That's most folk Christian walk. God be like saying, I got many exceedingly great promises for you. We like, oh, I got a new house. I got a new car. <laughs> but you still got sin in your life. The world out here got new houses and new cars. New jobs. They go on the vacation on the Cancun. They got great furniture. They got a 70-inch flat screen. <laughs> we got us a new television for Christmas. Uh, Lord bless them. But y'all drunk as a skunk. You ain't no different. He wants you to come in, move in, because he's got a blessing for you so that you can turn around and you can help him with others. That becomes part of your reward. If you sin, you have an advocate with the Father. However, sin can't get on you like it used to because you got blood protection on you now. Stuff that used to, you know, hey, you can't, hey, look out here, player. <laughs> you can't, you can't, can't get on me. Uh-uh, I ain't doing that no more. My mind, uh-uh, I'm not talking that no more. Uh-uh, I'm not going there no more. Uh-uh, I'm not running that way no more. Used to, you get right there and sin goes, <whistles> come on, <laughs> you
you know it's true. You would just get ready to crack your Bible. <laughs> just <laughs> get ready to pray. <laughs> but you get to the place now, you say, I'm going to pray through. And when I get up, I'm going to have forgiven somebody. When I get up, it's going to be over. They may not love me no more, but I love them still. Guess what? I'm not going to hate. I'm not going to be bitter because you know what? Jo I need joy. I need joy. All us walking around here with unforgiveness in our hearts. Alt. You know why we so alt magnets for alt? She said, what? Just magnets. We hear everything spoken. Sideways. Because we got, our hearts are already open for offense. We're already walking in a place that we think we're above reproach. We're already walking in a place that says, you better not ever put my name in your mouth. We're already walking like this with a chip on our shoulders. That's why Paul had to say, is, I hear there's divisions among you. Because we're already ready to say, you don't know who I am. Already. You know why? Because we're full of religion. That's why God is trying to get us back on the altar. And the whole church world could take a reset. Not just this little house. To get on the altar and stay on the altar because when my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, will humble themselves and pray, then will. We read it wrong. We read it like, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, then will I hear from heaven. We, we put it like, then will I hear from heaven. But he, it, it really reads, then will I hear from heaven. We read it, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, then will I hear from heaven. But he, he's saying it, then will I hear from heaven. You got to reread it. The other scripture we read the same way is when the enemy come in like a flood, then will the spirit of the Lord lift up a standard against him. You need to read those two scriptures. But. God is not going to do more for you than the spots you got on you. Now, it would be a crying shame. Come here, daughter. Stand here. I don't do this to you. You won't beat me up. Stand here. Here, get you, get you a dot. Get me a dot. Don't get a lot. And I ain't playing here. This is serious. You know I ain't playing. Now, 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 I see something on you. You know, you need to get yourself together. You find something on me. This ain't fine. Touch me here. Yeah, well, as soon as you get yourself together. Uh-huh. Well, you know, if you was a little better than what you used to be. Uh-huh. Well, see, you need to check yourself. Okay. Now, which one, thank you. Now, which one of us is right? Neither one. And that's usually how we as Christians justify how we going to get it, get it, get it along. We're going to sit there and we're going to back and forth because we think that's called self-righteous. That's how we run our families. That's how, yes, ma'am and sir, y'all ain't got to say nothing. That's how we run marriages. That's why we got divorces, friendships. Come on. It's quiet in here. Come here, be my wife. Be married. 
if you would take out the trash. Uh, if you would. Just back and forth. Then all of a sudden, ain't no love. But we still going to take our happy butts to church. When we need to take our behinds to the altar. People doing it all over the world. Just go to the altar. Go to go to the altar and pray. Fact about it, the first, when you need to, whether it came the other way, she should have hit the altar. Or I should have hit the altar. Hit me first. I should have hit the altar. You know why? So that I could burn up what's in my mind to tell her. Let me tell you, you yellow hair somebody. Well, I, I, I brought attention to her hair. Let me, let me talk to you. Or bring up what happened last time. And let's say it's just a friend. You know what? I'm, I'm about sick of you. And then I'm going to bring up here. I got some stuff I need to be telling you anyway. Let's say it's another brother. Where all that come from? Where that list come from? You know where it came from? It wasn't daily being taken. Oh, y'all need to say something. Don't act like I ain't saying the truth. It ain't daily being taken to the altar. Forgive me of my sins, my trespasses. Because now we got a whole stack. And if we're in a marriage or a friendship or a church relationship, all of a sudden now it's like all slippery. Because it done got to a boiling point now. And now we're going to say some stuff that we don't care. We're going to kill each other. We're going to murder each other because now we're going to cut each other all the way up. It ain't enough now to just get your, your attention. Now we got to go for the juggler. You know why? Because I got pages of information. I got last month's information if I'm married, uh, if, if friendship. I got last year's stuff on you because I've been storing this up for you, brother, sister. But I'm still in church. Lying on God, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells. And God is saying, you know, you mind, but you ain't getting no further than the door. I keep wanting to take you into the glory where there's power, miracles. Signs, well, I can use you, but there's foolishness at the door. And it don't matter who you are. Until you stop living your life like that and quit bringing a half-dead cow to God, and you say, I'm going to stay here. I don't care. This will stop divorces. This will stop breakup of friendships. This will keep people from leaving churches. This will keep you from leaving jobs. You ain't got to quit because they told you, do, do you earn your eight hours. We're paying you for eight. Give us eight. I ain't going to work here no more. Get yourself on the altar and pray. Pray for your kids. Pray. This, this will do it. Just I'm going to stay here until some changes come. And the first change is going to be in you. They're way back. I ain't going to do nothing until she change. He change. You, you going to have to change. Well, you get on the altar. That altar going to change you. I'm telling you the truth. Y'all might as well say amen. I know it's true. How long will it take? It may take you the rest of your life. The only thing you might get to do is win your one child to the Lord. Win your one spouse to the Lord. That may be all you get to do is win your one sibling to Christ. And that's what he told me. He says, I want my people to turn their sacrifice into ashes this year and purify their lives. 
learn what holy life, holy living is all about. Be an example to the world what it is to be holy, committed. That's what I want them to be. Amen. Amen. In all manner of conversation and living. I got one, two other scriptures and I'm out. Psalm 51 and 7. It's a personal thing. I want to be holy. Because that's what the Lord is coming back for. And if he comes in 2022, he's coming back for a people without spot, blemish, wrinkle. And he says this. He says church, but the church is made up of people that what? Every one of us is a brick. Every one of us is a stone that was hewn out. We got new daily washings. We're priests. Psalm 51 and 7. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me, I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. I read this scripture when I was in Asia one Sunday after having some discord with me and one of my brothers in Christ had had discord. Didn't know that I was affected by the discord to the degree I was affected, although I was brokenhearted as to how our relationship had turned out. And uh, it was one, he had went on and started another church and he was a great friend of mine, but I was, aff I was affected by it, but I, I wasn't praying this particular Sunday afternoon. When I was praying, I didn't have him in mind. But the first time I read this scripture, purge me with hyssop, I shall be clean. I had read that, I'm sure, before, but this other part here, wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. I had read that. But verse 8, make me hear joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. I read that. It became revelation to me for the first time one Sunday afternoon. And when I read it, it just radiated from the pages. And I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, make my bones to hear joy and gladness. I just said that as I finished praying in the afternoon one Sunday. And immediately I heard in my spirit, go to service tonight at this particular brother's church. So I readied myself and went to church that night. And I went to church that night. He was preaching and, and, and you know, enjoying his new fellowship. And they hadn't been open but maybe about a month or so, maybe two. And I was sitting behind him. He was the only minister on the platform. And all of a sudden, a spirit of weeping came over me. Oh, God, help me now. And I started to weep. I just started to weep and weep and weep. And so I was weeping so, and I wasn't making noise weeping, but I was crying and crying and crying. And people started looking at me, kind of like you all do when someone come in, everybody turn their head. And so people just started looking at me. And so he was preaching. He was an uh, evangelist at heart. And boy, he was preaching hard, but he kept looking back at me because the people kept looking at me. And this went on and on, and I was just crying. And I couldn't contain myself. And he looked back at me finally, and I didn't want to be a distraction at all. I didn't come to be a show. I didn't know what, why that happened. But finally he stopped, and he asked me, he said, hey, bro, what's going on? And I just told him, nothing, nothing, nothing. And after it was over, you know, I just loved on him, and he loved on me. And all of that. But what the Lord showed me was I had something in my heart against him. He was just obeying God and wanted more of God, and we were in different places. And I had a place in my heart that I didn't know, but it had cut off my joy. 
I didn't know that. But because I had a relationship on that altar, that in prayer, God could say to me, go there. And because I knew, I knew that that scripture, my joy was cut off. Had I not had that relationship with that altar, I never would have known. Because that joy was cut off a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. To the place like Samson, you just wake up one day and you don't know. I, my strength is gone. He just realized one day, you know, he shook himself and all of a sudden, that's what happened to the church. And that's what happens to us. We don't lose it overnight, but we, we wake up and like, all of a sudden, I don't feel that. Something, something's missing. Not all of a sudden. But when the Lord showed me that, and he showed me the reason was that you have a, you have a problem, you brother. He said, did you really? I forgave him. I got revelation. We were on the same team. My joy got restored. You hear me? See, we got to want fellowship with God and walk in white more than we want our way. And that sometimes means that we got to let it go because we are all on the same team. And what the enemy wants to do a lot of times is turn us against one another. But if we learn how to stay on that altar, I'm burning just like you. I'm hurting just like you. Come on. I'm giving up something just like you. And, and the fact that we stay away from the altar and we stay away thinking I'm, I'm not going to I done gave enough. No, you, if you, when you got that attitude, that means there's more to give. There's more you got to be burned. Because it's, it's until you have given it all, then it's like, I'm dead. I'm numb. And you know what? There's a lot of things that I can say that God has done in my life, and I'm just saying this to help somebody, that I'm numb to now. Stuff, there, there's some stuff God knows that this will make him holler uncle. But there's some stuff. You can't get me to holler uncle because I'm dead to it. And you know why? Because of that altar. You know why? Jesus, he endured the suffering right here, knowing that the glory is down here. You hear me? That's why we got to keep dying here so we can taste that. Because once you taste that, you hang up the phone right down on Lottie Smith. Forget that. I ain't got time for that. And what the girl said, anybody got time for that? Nobody got time for that. You hear me? And that's what the enemy wants to get you to do. 2021, 20, 22, get you hung up down here. Keep repeating the same old stuff. Come on, lift your hands and praise him. I got one more scripture and we done. I'm going to keep my garments white. Look at somebody say, I'm going to keep my garments white. Amen. Revelation 6 and 11. I'm going to give you my garments white. I realize I don't have a heaven or a hell to put nobody in. I'm going to do my part. And if, if somebody don't want to do their part, all I can do is pray. Come on. And offer up spiritual sacrifice, which is prayer and worship. Come on. Even Jesus can only do so much. But he's interceding for me. That's what I know what he's doing. And all the time I was out of the will of God in my life, Jesus wasn't sitting there judging. He was, set, he was doing priest work. He was doing what the priest did in the earth. He was, he was, he was, he was taking my sacrifices. Or he was interceding saying, turn around, son. Turn around. Turn around, daughter. Turn around. But now that we know this, we don't tempt him, put him to shame. Let's look at this, verse 11, 6 and 11. Then a white robe was given to each of them. Say white robe. white robe. And it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed as they were completed. A white robe would be given unto them. So, White 
is the color of the saints. Amen. Now, that, that's whether you wear white in the earth or not. But a white robe is what's going to be given to you. But we got to, the only thing that make our garments white is the blood of Jesus. Come on, I'm done. Praise him. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Amen. You can sit down right now. But just lift your hands and say, Lord, I want to be clean. Say, purge my mind. Purge my appetites. Praise God. Praise God. Come on, praise him in your way. Wash me. I want the grace to present my body as a living sacrifice and my mind. Listen, children of God, can't nobody force you to do nothing because God himself gave you free agency. We can't force you to pray, can't force you to fast, can't force you to, to, to do this, to do that. Can't force, nobody can force you to commit yourself. Nobody can force you. Nobody can force you. That statement has been made throughout the world. We've heard that sermon preached quietly. We've heard it preached. People have demonstrated it. But that ain't what this is all about. But I want the spirit. I want the spirit of the living God to feel freedom with me. To do as he pleases. Even if it means put me in an uncomfortable situation for his glory. 